Welcome to another episode of the B3 Students Podcast. We are back again, Dylan and Pastor Andrew. That's right. Um, yes, who's back? <laughs> hopefully you missed us, hopefully. Um, but Andrew preached a good message on Sunday night. Hopefully you're there, generate. And um, if you are not, it is on YouTube like always. And um, or if you want to go back and check it out, more than welcome. Um, yep. He preached about how Jesus will return and how um, it will be a glorious day for some who knows him and then Maybe not too great for those who don't. There but you go. How did how did you feel to preach it? Um, yeah, it was it was a very interesting text because I think when you when you get into Revelation, the title of the message was the Return of the King, and we know Jesus is coming, and we talked about His second coming. But there's there's two sides to that return, and I mean there it's a glorious day for us as believers, and then it's not a good day for those who are unbelievers, and so it's a very weighty message and um, and just a real challenging message for us to really ask the question are you know are we following who Jesus is because in the in the text if you go through there, there's a lot of particularly starting in verse 11 uh, all the way down to verse 16 talks about how he's faithful and true he's uh, he judges and makes war with justice his eyes are like a fiery flame many crowns on his head there's a lot of things that point to who Jesus is and so I really challenge the students and, and challenge myself to really think through this this week what Jesus are we following? You know, are we following the one who is faithful and true? Are we the one following the one that's all knowing because his eyes are like a fiery flame? And so, um, you know, that that was really a, a a difficult thing to think about because I think here, particularly here in America, we we get so satis we get so satisfied with our comforts and different things. And so, um, you know, I think it was a it was a hard message to to preach in a sense and to to kind of go through. But at the same time, um, it, it was a very beautiful passage that we see here as it talks about Jesus returning. But there's a lot of things that kind of make us wonder, you know, are we are we following who Jesus says that he is? Do we worship him because of who he is, not just because of the wrath that's coming? And so yeah. um, very, very interesting. A lot, a lot of a uh, lot of things within that there. So, yeah. So for, for most people, because most people here, they, they grew up in church, they grew up coming here. Sure. Yeah. So for for them. How would they know that they're following Jesus and not of the things of this world? Like, how do they yeah. stay on track and follow Jesus and continue to get into the Word? Yeah, I think the hesitation here is, is I think I used this illustration. I talked about how, uh, particularly in, in Revelation 19, 11, it talks about Jesus is faithful and true. Yeah. And uh, and I drew a parallel that Jesus is the the true ruler, the true king that is faithful and true. And I, and I kind of brought a parallel with that to talk about how politicians and yeah. people that are in government, rulers uh, that we know of, and I use politicians because that's how our government's structured here. Uh, and, and we see a lot of cases that when it comes to people getting elected and things like that, they say certain things, but they don't necessarily believe those things. And, it's, and so as they get in office, they may keep those promises or they may not keep those promises yeah. and do something completely different. Yeah. So we, as the people who cast the vote, we place our trust in that. And and that person, but then when that candidate goes and does something that we're like, wait a minute, I didn't sign up for that, um, then we're like, oh, time out, like like re redo, like let's hit the redo button on this. Uh, well, the the point of that was is to show that Jesus is the true King, the true ruler who is always faithful and true. That you can trust everything that He says. Uh, you can trust His word. You can take Him for what He says. He makes promises and he keeps promises. And so um, I think the, the question that, that I drew there and, and going back to your question is to say, you know, how do we know if, you know, if we're if we're trusting in Jesus? How do we know if we're um, or if we're trusting people above Jesus or the ways of this world or whatever? I think it's just to examine our heart. You know, where, where are we? What, where, where do we look to whenever it comes to? Uh, to, to struggle moments, difficult moments, and even in good moments of our life, are we looking to the ways of the Lord? Are we following Jesus because he's faithful and true? Are we looking um, to to him as our ultimate fulfillment? Or do we find our fulfillment in the news or sports or whatever it is to satisfy us? I mean, we know we talk about this all throughout the book of Revelation is that Jesus is the only thing that satisfies us. So um, are we running to him in those moments? And I think typically when uh, it, it's, it's a lot easier uh, sometimes to, to run to God when the struggle gets real, but even in the good moments of life, are we reflecting on him? Are we meditating on scripture? And I think it's really just examining like how how much priority are we placing on the things that we read about in scripture from our Bible reading to um, to you know to being here at church and, and sitting in and learning, not just coming, but but learning and trying to grow and ask questions. So um, I think that's really kind of how you see how you how you would gauge that to a degree. It's almost like a matter of focus. Like, what, yeah. how much focus yeah. are you putting into one thing, you know? Exactly. Like, if you want to, like, be a, a good athlete, you put a lot of time and focus into it. Sure. 
And then same yeah. thing when it comes to like focusing on the world and focusing on Jesus, mm -hmm. where, your, where your time yeah. goes at. A lot. And, and I want to be clear though, like it's, it's okay to have other things to do yeah. outside of sitting down and reading the Bible. I'm yeah. not advocating that we become monks yeah. um, and that we shut down and we don't do anything. But you bring up a good point. I remember whenever I was in high school, I was trying to earn scholarships to play golf in college. And so I spent all my time playing golf, practicing, doing everything that I could to get a scholarship. And that took away from everything else. I quit going to church, quit reading my Bible. Prayer was never happening unless I was praying for a, a putt to go into the hole. Like so that that's kind of what I'm talking about. You know, are we are we still focusing on the things of God? Or is that a number one priority in our life? Or are we just kind of pushing that to the side uh, unless we're going through a difficult situation? Uh, so I think it's 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 really asking the question and it's not really a hard question. Are we growing in our walk with God? Um, if we're not, then there's a missing link somewhere. And uh, for different people, that could be different things. But we need to look to identify what that is. And um, and, and I think that can kind of determine where our focus is. Yeah. If if we're not growing in our walk with our God, and, and we're, if we're not growing in our walk with God and yeah. not growing in our faith, how would we know? Would, yeah. we, would we notice something? Yeah, I think um, I think that you, you notice certain things. I mean, I think kind of one of the things that I said was is that, you know, how— how are we navigating one through difficult situations? You know, are we, are, like for me, I know that whenever I'm struggling with certain things, I'll be very, very quick to run to other people. So let's say that I come to you and say, hey, I'm struggling with this. I don't know what to do. Um, rather than going to God first, you know, is, is, God, is going to God our first thought? Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean that you're not in a growing relationship, but, um, but at the same time, you know, let's take a look at another example. Certain things that we struggle with in our life. Are we seeking repentance for certain sin in our life? Uh, are we are we um, kind of, or just saying, okay, God, I'm sorry I did this, but even though I'm sorry I did this, I'm going to continue to do this anyway. Like, I don't know if we could say that we're growing in our relationship if we're not sacrificing and giving up our selfish desires to follow him. So um, so I think that would be a couple of ways. Um, I don't know. What do, you, what do you think? Put it back on you. I get I get enough questions. I'm going to ask you questions. What do you, what do you think? This, I mean, I think... <clears throat> Gosh, this I was wasn't playing. This was not playing yeah, at all. Yeah. Putting on the spot. Yeah, go ahead. It's all right. Um, I mean, it so it takes faith, of course. It takes faith to yeah. believe in God. It takes faith to just continue to grow and believe in the Word and everything. And so, faith is like faith is like it's, it's when you like it's when you're less un it's, le it's when you're less certain on things. Sure. So, like if if you have more questions than answers, that can be a good thing. You know, like if right. you're asking God questions or if you're asking, you know, like if I'm asking Angel a question then it can be a good thing, you know? It's like just ask more questions in prayer and it can, yeah. it can lead to an answer that God will reveal to you. Yeah, I mean, I think the process that we're talking about here is this idea of sanctification. You know, that's what it means to be in a growing walk with the Lord. Yeah. It means that we're, we're staying focused on Him, we're reading His Word, we're meditating on it. And as we do that, as we study His Word, He God reveals to us certain areas of our life that we know we need to work on and give over to Him. Um, even now, I mean, I could probably list 10 things that I know that I probably need to give over to Him, like my obsession with basketball. And right now, with the uh, all the tournaments and stuff going yeah. on, like all my attention seems to be there, but at the, at the end of the day, I have to pull back and say, okay, God, uh, I don't need necessarily all that. That's entertainment. I want to focus on you. Um, you know, help me to give that over to you. And that's just a you know kind of a silly example, but it's a true thing. I mean, yeah. things things that become idols in our life um, hinder our growing relationship with the Lord. So, um, so I think it's just asking God to reveal to you certain areas that um, you may not be giving over to Him. Uh, what are they? And then uh, lay those before Him, and then seek uh, seek Him first. Seek the kingdom of God first. I think that's really what it boils down to. Yeah, because our relationship with God is is purposeful. It has purpose in our life. Yeah, and it absolutely. And it's it's like what you said when Jesus returns. And one of your points, you said Jesus' return will be purposeful. Yes. And it would be purposeful yeah. whether you're a believer or not a believer. Yeah. And so if you're a believer, it will be a great day. It'll be a glorious day. Absolutely. We'll see Jesus. We'll get yeah. to go to heaven, and it'd be great. But if you're not a believer. Yeah, not Maybe a good day. Maybe it won't be the greatest day. Not a good day. The image that we saw in the text was is like vultures that that descend down onto roadkill, basically, yeah. is what it talked about, and um, and that it picks the bones and picks them clean. So I don't think that's a good day. Yeah, yeah. So and this just means like we should just go out there in our daily lives and you know continue to lead people to Jesus. You know, do the great yeah. commission and make disciples. Yeah, I think we see another motivator there is to know that you know this is the destination. Uh, this is what's going to happen for those that uh, do not know him. And that should motivate us. It should break our hearts. Like, I think I made a comment and said that, you know, I'm not content with just sitting back. And uh, while people may choose to reject him, uh, just because they choose to reject him doesn't mean I'm going to stop. You know, people are dying and going to hell. We need to take the message to them. And so we need to be uh, in, in your inner circle of people who you hang out with. 
do they see you living out Christ? Now, they may not know necessarily what that looks like, but I know that you as a believer, you know what I mean when I say that. So are you living that out in your daily lives? Are you loving people? Are you uh, unconditionally loving people, showing forgiveness and extending forgiveness out and things like that? And so um, Jesus' return will be purposeful, and that should motivate us to want to go tell others about him because um, you know, I think really and truly as we read God's word, God's desire is for all people to come to know him. Um, but we, we see here at the, end of, at the end of Revelation that that's not necessarily going to be the case for all people. So, um, so if we can bring as many people as we can with us, uh, then, you know, I think that would be better. I think it would be too. <laughs> well, I th you think it's good? I think, good? yeah, I think so. I think that's pretty good. Um, yeah, hey, uh, try to guess where we are. Uh, we are in a different spot, so we want you to uh, play along with this. And I may give a prize for whoever can guess what it is. I don't know what that is, but um, some of you are going to know right off the top what this is. This is kind of easy, but some of you may not. So uh, comment below and let us know. And um, yeah, we'll go from there and see what happens. Yep. Yeah. Well, we hope you enjoyed it. We think that this podcast was purposeful. So like <laughs> it, comment, share, tell us, share it with somebody. Tell us how we did. Subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, see you later. See y'all next time. Thank you.